Hello everyone, welcome to Respectful Dave. Today we're going to play a game and I'm going to walk you through my thoughts and my thought process. So you can access my mind for one video. Your job is to pause the video from time to time, think, well, what would I play in this position? Then unpause it, see what I thought or what I, what I played and compare some things and then we can all learn, improve and you can make a difference. Okay, we found the game. We're going to open up with the pawn to d4. This is what we call the first stage of the game, the opening. The second stage is called the middle game. The third stage is called the end game. I only st I always start explaining this for some reason. Our opponent is taking some time, which is a little bit worrying because, yeah, there you go. So my opponent plays g6, probably going to play bishop g7. Already I'm starting to think what my opponent is, is going to, to do. I'm going to play e4, occupying the center further. And I guess bishop g7, because this bishop is hitting the pawn, I'm going to start defending it. David, it was already defended by your queen, so you just wasted the tempo. Well, not necessarily. So this bishop in, sorry, in this, this pawn chain, is what we call a pawn chain, is already going to start playing against this bishop in the long term. So I want my pawns in the color of this bishop, so this bishop has doesn't have too much scope. I'm going to keep developing my pieces, knight to f3 going to castle and now we are pretty much in the middle game because we have both occupied the center developed our pieces and castle so what you should do in the in the middle game is to keep developing but now you have, you have to start thinking about plans um that being said chess is a very general game of course and all these principles that i'm telling you they should serve you as a guide and not as a an absolute truth um, what happens is that if you follow these principles blindly, you're probably going to end up doing something like, okay, you play pawn to e4, your opponent plays knight f6, then you develop your knight, and you lose that pawn. Yeah? So everything, everything's given circumstances. Chess is such a complicated game. There's nothing that should be so absolute other than if you checkmate your opponent, you win. That's, that's, an, that's an objective truth, yeah. Okay, my opponent put the knight on h5, which I'm not a big fan. I am aware that my opponent wanted to play knight f4, but I don't think knight f4 is a big threat here because I just take and then takes, and this this pawn is more of a vulnerability and a weakness rather than a strength. So I'm happy if my opponent does that. That's why I'm going to play knight g3. I ask myself, in the middle game, you have to ask the right questions, right? So I ask, I ask myself, which pieces should I trade? And I play, well, knight g3, I have an, what, what I call an advantageous... So I keep the tension from a better position because if black plays or takes the, the knight, then I take with the h pawn and I, I like my position. I take with the h pawn, I create this window for my, for my king, avoiding some future back rank. David, you're nowhere near a back rank, mate. Well, you have to start taking care of these things because um, if you don't move your pawn now, you would like to want to move it once the back rank is there, right? So it's called prophylaxis. Um, playing these defensive moves is prophylaxis. So knight g3 I liked if black had taken, but black played knight f4, to which I'm going to chop that knight off, like many people like saying. And after e takes a 4 maybe this is a little bit of a worse version than before, but still I'm pretty happy that my knight will be able to attack this pawn, for instance. And black will always, yeah, so black will eventually have to play a g5 move, which already kind of tells me that black is going in the wrong direction, because, okay, let's take a look at something. So the pawns of my opponent's uh, castle and king is, are, are in this way. So you would prefer to have your pawns in close to your king rather than far away from your king. So that's going to be very uh, difficult to defend for black in the future. David, I don't believe that. How, how, these pawns are fine. Uh, the, the, king is not, it's, the king is nice and safe. You have to be careful. You can't move pawns backwards, so you will regret them in the future. You have to be, care you have to be careful where, where you put your pawns. I'm gonna play knight d2. It's it turns out that this position is a little bit um the this this the, the game is going through a positional stage. Um normally you have two kinds of position or you have two kinds of games in chess. It's either tactical or positional. You can also call it um static or dynamic. Uh dynamic is a synonym of tactics and static is a synonym of positional. There are many ways of saying it, but it all refers to the same thing, which is if you're playing in a tactical position, your king is maybe unsafe, the pieces are very, very tense, uh, everything's very crazy. And if it's a positional game, then it's very likely to be like this one, where we're both trying to improve our pieces little by little. By little. We're starting to think about long-term weaknesses, like the pawn structure, and such, such things like that. So that's why I'm saying, I think 
this is going to be a positional uh, weakness in the future. It might not be tactically uh, achievable or tactically uh, exploitable now, but in the future it will definitely be. And I will prove my point in the future, hopefully. This knight of g4 looks a little bit annoying. If I move this rook to g1, for instance, you can jump to f2 and that would be horrible. So I'm going to kick the, kick it, kick it out, and after that I want to break the the, the set in, in the center with g3. The question is, can I do it directly? Maybe I can do it directly. Hmm. I'm gonna do it directly because h3 and then g3. Maybe I allow some other options to my opponent, and if you can limit your opponent's options, then of course that's pretty good. Um, the only problem is that after f takes, I can't take with the f pawn, so I have to take with the knight, which not might not be ideal. That being said, uh, I could also take him with the king, maybe. But I like this move, because maybe f4 is a problem now for my opponent. And if I open up the position, once again, the king's safety is going to be a... The king's safety is going to be a big priority. Sorry, that's what I meant. And my king on h1 is a little bit safer than the king on g8. Because my pieces are more active. The pieces are more looking towards the king. For example, this bishop and this queen are lined up. They're, that battery is going to attack that king, and that's going to be pretty good. So I sacrifice upon on d4. And what I'm get getting on ex in exchange, sorry, is um, activity once again. So if if I manage to, for example, play knight f3, David, you're blundering knight e3. Well, that's part of my plan because I'm happy to give up some material for the sake of opening my opponent's king. Uh, on top of that, I think I, I have to start considering moves like rook takes e3, bishop takes e3, and, and, and playing very dynamic chess. So all of a sudden, the position has transformed from... from uh, from a um, positional game to a tactical game. And that can happen from one move to another, like that. It's very easy. It, it happens from one move to another. That's what chess is about. Uh, you, you have to constantly adapt, you transform to the new circumstances. And um, I think these circumstances are pretty good for white. Queen f2, if knight takes f1, I have to take the d4 knight, bishop. And after knight takes g3, there's not much to be done with that knight. I'm gonna take with the h pawn. And this is a very complicated position. I think that it's easier to play this position in a blitz game, such as the one we're playing right now. And on top of that, the g5, like the king, whose king is safer, right? That's the the, the question that remains. So I'm going to attack this bishop. Um, I think that this bishop might run the risk of being trapped. So for example, bishop h3, I play f5, and this bishop is a little bit far away from their, their, their friends. So, for example, I play f5 now. I blunder that, I must admit. So I now have to come up with another plan, unfortunately. So what I will do is I'm going to play rook f6, hoping for some e5. So, for example, rook e6, e5 would be a good move, I think. And then, okay, but in this position, I play rook takes d6. And where is the queen going? And ah, the queen is going there, interesting. I'm going to play queen f2 now. I'm a little bit worried. Play bishop f1. Bishop takes e4, king g1. I seem to be holding on. Surprisingly. And David, you're losing. Yeah, I am, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop making moves, right? You, you should be persistent. Most of the time, what happens is that um, many times your opponent will blunder with you. And what I mean with that is you should not, oh my goodness. You should not give up so easily. It's it's more complicated than that. So we're going to play this. Rook b3 doesn't exist, which is important. And when I reaches the f5 square, which is very, very annoying to meet. Even more in a in a blitz game, such as this one. I'm going to play rook h5. Oh, that's an annoying move. That's a good find by my opponent. A good find. Oh, and there you go. As I said, it's not a good reason to... To, to stop calculating, and in fact, it's still not a good reason to, to stop here. I still have to be careful, um, because my opponent has two passed pawns, so... For, for a second, I, I, I almost relaxed there, but I have to remind myself that it's more complicated than that, and I should still... I should still concentrate as much as I can. I'm gonna play rook b4. Yeah. I'm going to try to bring my knight here, which would put pressure in the, the b2 pawn, so I would be able to take it. And I think I should be able... I'm going to take this. What should I play? I'm going to play knight c4 and knight takes. 
And I, I should be able to win this. No, 93, 94 is a big threat. Maybe it's not a threat. Rook b4, rook b7, rook c6, rook c5, rook f5. I'm gonna take, I'm potentially going to take that. Let's, let's give a check. Should be fine. Should be fine. Give another check. Let's give another check. Knights are tricky, yeah? Tricky pieces. And there you go. So now we get another fork and we win the game. Well, that was very, that was very ups and downs. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and have a nice day.